music. What is it for? How does it work? And why do we make it? These are all questions that, as a musician, sometimes we have to ask ourselves. Some people make music to express a feeling, an emotion they have inside. Sometimes people make music to make people lose their minds on large sound systems. Sometimes people make music to make you calm and allow you to code, code, I don't know, whatever people that code do. The point is music has a lot of different uses, but one of those uses is universal. And that is music helps you feel something. It puts you in a state of mind and it helps evoke a certain emotion or feeling or mood. This video today is about the concept of music that we try to make a mood with, but we don't know like how it's gonna be interpreted necessarily because there's another factor that goes into it, and that is video. I'm talking about library music. I'm talking about music made for audio libraries. And I have 40 tracks that I've made for the YouTube library that have been out there for a while now. Well, the last 10 haven't, they're out today. But all 40 of these tracks are now available online for you to download, listen, do whatever you want to with your ears with, if you want to use them on YouTube, you can. You can put them in your YouTube videos, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So this video today is about those 40 tracks. We're going to go through them one by one, talk about the idea behind them, and then I'm going to put a little edit behind each one so that you can kind of see what they look like and feel like with a video component that I think matches them. I don't know why I'm making this video except to tell you that, that these tracks are out now and you can use them. Um, also, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I do know why I'm making this video. It's merch. Do you see this? Do you see this right here? This is new merch. That's right. It's out right now via Bonfire. It says RMR. Those are hands. They look like the Run the Jewels hands, sort of, you know, can't do it right now. But that's what they look like. Those are patch cables, you know, for the synthesizers. And RMR is Red Means Recording. It's all, it's merch. It all goes with the idea of the channel. What's that? You don't like black? You don't like this color scheme? Okay, one second. How about the white color design on red? I mean, there's a whole bunch of different colors, but these are the two designs. There's white and then there's color. So if you like this, you should go get one because all the proceeds for this merch uh, is going to Mermaids Charity to help trans youth. And I think that's a really, really good thing. I'm not making any money off these, but you can help uh, this wonderful charity by getting yourself some comfort comfortable comfortable uh merch got sweatshirts hoodies pullovers we got t-shirts all the stuff that merch is you know just go get some charity link in the description via bonfire get yourself a merry little christmas it's a limited time only so make sure you get it now link so we're going to go through all 40 tracks. But before we do that, let me explain to you what you can do with these tracks and what a library track is. A library track is something that's made for an audio library, a music library. You can get them on like lots of sites that sell stock assets. It's a staple of the video production world to use library tracks. YouTube, because they sometimes care about their creators, have a audio library that you can use for free. Uh, music made by a ton of people of very high quality. There are tracks, like hundreds and thousands of tracks from all kinds of people who um, compose all different kinds of music. If you are a creator and you are looking for music for your video, make sure you check out the audio library from YouTube and I'll put a link to it in the description. One note about this though is that those tracks are really only licensable to use in YouTube. They're there for you to use for free and to monetize your videos with and people have taken my tracks and just like made videos that are monetized that it's like just the track and like a visualizer or just an image it's really weird but you're allowed to do that that's how the contract works however you're not allowed to use the tracks outside of youtube so please don't reach out to me and i know this won't work because people will anyways i've mentioned this like six times already but don't reach out to me and ask me to um, use my tracks in your projects in your video game if you want to hire me for uh, your video game or your movie or your project, baby, I'm here. I'm here, you just hire me and I'll make you a piece of music. That's what musicians and composers do, baby. Just bring me up, I'm, I'm probably cheap. I'm so cheap, I'm cheap and desperate. Just hire me for music. This is such a comfortable sweatshirt. Have you seen my easel weasel pants? These are the, this is the Buchla easel weasel. Yeah, easel weasel, I just like saying that. So let's get started. The first track on our list is called Flex. Flex is actually uh, started off as a leftover unfinished track from my Psychic Realty album. It went through a lot of different iterations. It was at one point, it was gonna be like a cover of Some Days Are Better Than Others by U2. It was like a Beck remix. Yeah, then it became a library track. And um, if I had to say what it was good for, it's gonna be like kind of macho stuff, like, um, you know, sports, hitting people in the face, shooting things, BMX, that kind of shit, you know. 
um, toxic masculinity. Here's an edit with flex. All right, the next track is called I Do. Something about this whole period is I had just gotten complete ultimate from Native Instruments and um, I was testing it all out while making these tracks. And I went and I bought this thing from Output called Exhale. Um, I really, really like Output's offerings from a contact instrument standpoint. Um, Exhale, Substance, all of those, they're really, really cool. And I just used the hell out of Exhale in this uh, uh, 10 tracks like all over the place. What do I think this track is good for? Uh, I think it's good for like cool sciencey stuff. Um, that's my first like evocation for it, like how it feels when I listen to it. Here's a montage with some science stuff for I Do. All right, this next one I really like. It's called Let's Go Home. Um, it's got more exhale in it. It's just very chill and vibey. Um, I really, really like the chord progression. I really like the buildup, and I really like the lead in the end section. Much more of a song than it is a library piece, but sometimes you have to take a chance and like just write up a straight up song and see if somebody wants to use that kind of energy in their video. Uh, what is this good for? A lot of these are gonna be good for like credit sequences, if you're shouting out your patrons or showing off your patrons uh, on your video. Travel, a lot of this stuff will also work really, really well for travel. Here's an edit with it. Next up is a track called Tiptoe. I honestly don't know why I made this track. I don't know what the core of it was. It's got this great little broken beat and it's got some more Exhale samples in it. Some really cool synth work. It's very funky and fun. Um, I really, really like it, but I don't know what I was thinking of when it came to like what would go over this. I think a lot of the stuff I was like, let's just see what happens. I, I have to make 10 tracks. Like, oh, this is overwhelming. What am I gonna do? Cause I made them in like a month. So I was working really, really fast. Um, for this one, again, like credit sequences, patron sequences, intros, lists, outros, um, montage, and tech. The last one is what I decided to do an edit for you today with. So here's an edit with Tiptoe. All right, this is a fun one. Uh, turn up, let's go. I just wanted to make a fun kind of like flexy sort of track, like, like you know, brr, like cool track. Um, it's a little cheesy, but I think a lot of the library tracks when it comes to being cool are cheesy. They're not super well put together when it comes to like pushing the uh, boundaries of music because they can't be. They have to be evocative of a certain feeling. And a lot of the times that's a little cliche. You have to work in cliches, right? So for this one, like um, we're going to see an edit with some drag racing. And I think it works really, really well for like any kind of like macho or cool sort of activity with a lot of energy to it. So montages, credits, title sequences, all that stuff will work really well. So here's an edit with Turn Up, Let's Go. Let's go. Smile, this next track, actually shares some DNA with the previous one. Unfortunately, it always came across to me as a little busy, and I think it's because of the coast to coast I drop bombs next level VO bits I put in there. I should not have used those. So that coupled with the exhale samples from output, it's just too vocal heavy to be a good like like bed track. Um, however, it does work well for titles and stuff like that. This next one is another one I really, really like to listen to. Um, 
but it's also a little distracting too. It's called Sunspots. I think the vocal melodies and the samples are um, a little distracting overall. Um, and that's a problem that I had with a lot of these tracks. I was still trying to figure out what to do. And I feel like uh, if I was gonna redo those tracks, I would subdue the melodies and really, really uh, keep the vocal samples at a minimum. This one, for some reason, really speaks to me from like a drone footage, uh, you know, perspective. It feels very expansive and like lifting. So uh, here's an edit with it, with drone footage, with sunspots. All right, the next one's called Mia. This was named after my cat, Mia. Also, the little vocal samples in it sound like it's saying Mia. It's got kind of some cat energy. I don't know, it's kind of like cat. It's fun. Um, I used too much XL and there's too much high end to mesh really well with VO. Um, that's another thing is that the frequency content of these tracks needs to be considered. So if you have the track turned down, it's supposed to be like underneath a vocal, you're really gonna pick up on that like two to seven K range and uh, of frequencies in the piece of music. And if you got too much stuff in there, it's really going to like distract from the vocal. So sometimes I'll put like a high pass on the tracks to keep them from really getting too much in the way there. And we'll focus more on the upper mids uh, and everything below that. Uh, and here is an edit with Mia, I think. Do we have an edit from Mia? Nope. All right, now we get to probably one of the most, uh, definitely in the top five popular tracks I know that I've done on the platform, and that is called Heaven and Hell. The reason that I know this is popular is two things. One, I've heard it in a ton of videos, um, and I always am really honored when I hear that. So for instance, Warhammer 40K videos, lore videos, um, like I think Alien Theory used it. Just like a lot of like that kind of like lore um, science fiction, horror stuff uh, that I watch quite a bit on the platform. Um, I've heard it in there and that's always really, really cool when you hear a creator that you like using your piece of music. The other reason that I know it's popular is because I've had a lot of people reach out and ask if they can use it in projects outside of YouTube. And unfortunately the answer is no. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like it, it's just a really popular track. And here is an edit with a bunch of sci-fi stuff to it. It's got this epic, cool fantasy sci-fi feel. So there you go. Heaven and hell. Final track on this group of 10 is called Exhale. This was inspired by um, the track Breakdown by Handsome Boy Modeling School. It's really, really fun um, and really, really chill. And I love that track. And I wanted to capture some of that energy. A lot of the stuff in this was played unquantized um, so you can get a little bit of slop. The bass line is ridiculous and just like makes no sense, but I love it. Um, this is one of my favorite tracks to listen to. It has a lot of really positive energy. So I'm gonna give it a nine from listenability. And it actually works really, really well um, uh, under VO and also as an edit. And here are some puppies. All right, 
Well, now we're in the next batch of 10. All of these were done in batches of 10 for YouTube. And the first one is probably my most popular track, and that is called Power Up. It is a chiptune, up-tempo little banger, and I've heard it in um, a lot of videos uh, about video games, including Matt Nick Muscles, who I'm a huge fan of, like his What Happened series. I just heard it in a lot of cool videos, and it works really well. It, it sounds great underneath people talking about stuff, and yeah, people also really want to license it for their video games. So hey, if you want me to make you a little chiptune banger again, reach out. I can make music for you. <sighs> Here's a little edit with a uh, power up. The next track is called The Emperor's Army, and um, this one's really interesting in that it's like a really bad drum and bass track with interstitials that I think I really like a lot, which are like these string sections, very soaring, beautiful, uh, in my opinion, string sections. So kind of like two different things you can get into when you're trying to use this track. And for me, I don't know why, it really speaks to like, like you know, deserts and drones and like like drone footage, not, not drones, that sounds bad. So that's what the edit's gonna be, a sort of epic uh, aerial footage, but specifically with like, you know, sand and stuff like that. Desert stuff, here you go, here's an edit. The most useless track is the next one called Into the Sky. It's a sort of like weird post-rock thing. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's got an inspirational vibe to it, but I think I've ruined it by using um, Native Instruments as kinetic metal. I shouldn't have done that. I should have found some other way to um, give it its little whizzy bits. It does have a really nice like end screen sort of vibe to it. Um, inspirational, but like just not really good from an edit standpoint. Okay, the next one is called Star Drive. This is sort of inspired by gorillas a little bit, teddy bears, like pop electronica kind of stuff. I was also using a lot of the Sunburst Electric and Contact, and you can hear that all over the place in here. But I think I nailed a particularly nice production quality on this track, which I'm really happy with. I love the big, small feeling of the chorus versus the verse section, so to speak, even though there's no lyrics in it. This one really speaks to me from like a road trip perspective. So here's an edit uh, with Star Drive. Next up is maybe even more useless than the other track. Sorry, I think this one wins for uselessness. This one's called A Rising Wave. This is this really odd techno track um, uh, done in a sort of Norse style with like a long melody 
that plays out polymetrically over a four on the floor. The biggest claim to fame that this track has is that some woman tried to like get this track taken down. I think it was like gonna sue me and or YouTube because it has the same name as her album. And I think she was mad because it was getting better SEO because of all of the people that took this track on YouTube and just made a like audio visualizer so they could monetize it for themselves. I think it was getting better SEO than her track was and she didn't like that. So she tried to like get it taken down. Absolute bonkers behavior. Um, in the end, yeah, she didn't, obviously. <laughs> it's a really weird track. I don't have an edit for it, but um, I think it's pretty listenable. Next up is Pixelated Autumn Leaves. This track is almost perfect. I love the vibe of this track. It's a sort of like down-tempo, chill IDM track. Um, the issue with it is a particular instrument in it has this very screechy, resonant sound that adds a very like kind of foreboding feeling to it. It never settles and it always kind of distracts because this weird sound is happening. And I do think that that contributes to it. Like I think under the right direction, this track could actually be used very interestingly in like upstream color or something like that, you know, like some kind of like weirdly nostalgic but disturbing situation. So here is an edit with that. All right, so I tried to capitalize on the success of Heaven and Hell um, by making a Heaven and Hell part two. This one's okay. It's not as good as the first one, um, but it shares a lot of DNA with it. I think that it has some really, really nice string parts in it. I was really, really enjoying the string arrangements that I did in this. Uh, a really bad guitar solo in it though, uh, fake guitar solo. If you can find a use for it, go for it. Um, but uh, I don't know, it's kind of a weird, odd duck considering uh, its predecessor was so much more popular. All right, these next three are dear to my heart. They are I'll Remember You, A Revelation, and We'll Meet Again. These are almost purely piano pieces. Um, some of them have some string arrangements in them. And I had never made music like this before. Back in the day, uh, you know, when I was... Um, playing flute and getting to know keyboards, I did want to write classical pieces um, or, you know, orchestrally arranged pieces, but I never sat down and wrote something like that. And so these three came from me just sitting at the piano and playing and um, then arranging strings around them. I didn't play to a click track. I just played and came up with these pieces. And I'm very, very, very proud of that work. Um, I think they are all extremely listenable. Um, I have had requests to use them in various situations. Um, and that makes me really, really happy. If you would like me to write you pieces like this, please, God, get a hold of me. I am itching to do this. Um, yeah, so here's an edit with one of them. I'm not really sure which one it is, but I love these pieces to death. All right, on to the next group of 10. We're going to start off with a banger called Trinity. I don't even know why I called it that. Maybe because it has three sections, like an A, B, and C section. It's got some really, really cringe male shouts in it that I should not have put in there. I think the sound design on the drop is pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. Like, this is 
It just kind of feels like a clueless, like, flex sort of song. It works well for fashion. I bet you could use it for, like, showing off watches or other shit that no one cares about that's expensive. But here's an edit with it. Serious Jazz, I don't know why I made this track. It's really, really silly. Uh, I don't know what you'd use it for. Maybe like a quirky vlog thing? Um, it's really weird. weird. Uh, it does work well underneath talking. Like, it's a pretty good bed track. It's a little too quirky to be like a front and center track, but I do believe it works okay as a bed track. Next up is You In My Arms. I really like the vibe of this track. I think it's a, quite a listenable track. Uh, it works pretty well as a bed as well. Um, so if you're just looking for something up-tempo and positive to put underneath when you're talking about stuff to people, this is a great track for that. It can take center stage and you can edit strictly to it if you want to. And that's a great trick when it comes to bed music. Can you switch back and forth between it being front and center and being a bed piece? And uh, I, think, I think You In My Arms pulls that off. Next up is another weird one, Sightlines. This one is almost fully cribbed from one of my favorite tracks by a band called Loney Deer called Violence in terms of its melody and chord progression. I am ready to admit that now. Loney Deer, I'm sorry I ripped you off, but I really, really liked that track and I wanted to see what would happen if I did it in a synthwave style. I think it has good movement to it, so any video that you have good movement with, this will work. It's got a propulsion, and that's something to think about when you're putting video to it, is like, is there a sense of movement that matches the way that the piece of music feels? Next up is one of my favorites from this group. It's called Everything is Gonna Be Just Fine. All of the synth sounds in this came from my Access Virus C. I played them all in on top of each other, just like one track after another. I really, really like the sounds in this, and I really, really like the chord progression. I really, really like the little chord uh, fake out in the, um, I guess, chorus. And I like that it has a melody without being too in your face. Next up is Through the Crystal. This one is great. This is also a semi chip tune esque track um, that is a little bit more epic and mysterious. I really love the way this one sounds. And I actually did get a gig specifically because of this track that um, I did one piece for that was supposed to be a whole soundtrack for a video game. And then the, the rest just fell through. And I have no idea what happened. And I still think about it every day. Hey, I can do this kind of music. You want to hire me to do this kind of music? Hire me to do this kind of music. 2024, baby. Just hire Jeremy to do music. Wow, wouldn't that be crazy? Maybe he could stop making YouTube videos and he could just make music. Fuck me.
All right, next up is uh, one of my favorite listening tracks. It's called Absolutely Nothing. Uh, this is the better version of, of Pixelated Autumn Leaves if I had to like categorize it. So it's like digital nostalgia. It's good for talking over, for tech, science, hacking, but uh, it's also very nostalgic, um, which is an interesting combination. Lost and Found. This is an interesting track. I think it's pretty useful and I think it's very, very pretty. This was very much inspired by Hayden James, the track Numb, in that I really love the small drop concept in, in uh, new R&B and future bass where like the drop really doesn't go crazy crazy it just kind of like elevates or even gets really small like in the Hayden James track Numb the drop is smaller than, than the stuff before it it just has a lot more fidelity to it so that's what this was inspired by I really really love this track I think it works really well for a lot of stuff here's an edit with Lost and Found <laughs> Annihilate. Oh man, I want to make more tracks like this. I am keep on waiting to hear this in a YouTube video, but so far no one has had the balls to do it. Cowards. This track was so much fun to put together. Um, you know, Transformer Michael Bay bullshit. Just like big, grating, crazy sci-fi sounds. Um, big, like cheesy Tycho, like uh, Hollywood drums. It needs robots killing things and uh, transformations and cool visual effects and stuff. And so uh, I will have an edit for you that is exactly that. <laughs> The hardest part is the last one on here, and I, you can hear that I returned to like the concept of a piano-based uh, sort of like you know textural classical arrangement kind of thing. A lot of uh, noir piano in this. You'll hear the noir particles in this quite a bit. I think if I was going to change anything about this piece, I would have used a bit more reverb on the piano, and I would have kept the sort of background wailing bits um, a little more sparse, especially at the beginning. But I do really love the way this track weaves and feels. This track feels like Broadchurch, uh, the BBC one. Um, it really feels like uh, sort of a trailer track or a period where like you're going back and forth between two sets of characters as they are discovering things or going through like, you know, maybe a loved one's belongings after they've died and then the investigators going through the dead person's belongings, you know, um, to like find clues, that kind of like thing. I think it works really well for that. It's like emotional, but it's also sort of procedural. And I just got self-indulgent and here is the Broad Church season one trailer recut to the hardest part. You and G said, no, you don't. No, 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 no you no, don't. No. It's Broad Church. <laughs>
All right, we are down to the last 10. These are the ones that are coming out today uh, on the platform and also out with all the other tracks that I'm putting on Bandcamp and Spotify and all that kind of stuff. All these were given to patrons early if you want to be part of those early access bits like early access videos and early access music and all that kind of stuff. Head on over to the Patreon. You know, it's linked in the description. What do you got to lose? Two bucks a month? What is that, like a banana? You don't need to eat that banana. You got enough potassium inside of you. We got potassium over at the Discord. All right, let's go. These first four here were specifically written with a particular channel type in mind. And that is a channel type that I watch all the time. So things like Oki's Weird Stories, uh, Roanoke's Tales, Atrocity Guide, the Exploring series, um, Barely Sociable, Nightmind, um, stuff that covers real life mysteries and horror stories, um, sci-fi and horror lore, uh, SCP stuff, mysteries, all that kind of stuff. I love that stuff. Now I know uh, that a lot of that stuff gets scored by a, a guy named Ryan Probert, who is a wonderful person and composer who I do have an uh, interview with. You can find it in my channel. He's great. So I was like, well, I should make some music that's specifically for this type of channel because I like it. The first one's called Missing Persons. It's, uh, you know, sort of like going over the facts of like a mystery or a murder or something like that. So, uh, hey, if you're one of those channels and you're making a video like that, use this. Use it inside of it. Put it inside you. Here's an edit. Next up, I just straight up told this track science montage. I'm like, I'm like, this is what it's fucking for, y'all. Just use it for it. I'm trying to be more direct with that. No more like clever song names. Just use use the name for exactly what you want people to use it for. <laughs> a lot of piano colors in this one from Native Instruments and a little too much, I think. It's a little too weird. Uh, I think I could have dialed back some of the like rev stuff from output and some of the piano colors stuff. But overall, I think it's great. I actually was working on an edit for this, but it was giving me flashbacks of working at a corporate job doing um, video for Amazon and using like footage from their Amazon warehouses and automation and stuff. And I was like, no, I can't, I can't do this anymore. So no edit for this one, but that's the kind of stuff you might want to use it for. Next up, Dead Wrong. I love this one. Um, this one is straight up inspired by like that very specific opening credits that we saw in the, like the era of the movie seven. Um, and American horror story actually has doing a great job bringing this style back. Um, I'm using the footage from the intro to condemned criminal origins to show you this. Cause I just started playing that again. And I was like, Oh my God, the intro is exactly what this is meant for. So, um, works really, really well for like a creepy title sequence of some kind. Final Girl. Uh, this one shares a lot of DNA actually with Heaven and Hell, I realized after making it. Um, it's a lot less drum focused and a lot less epic. It's Final Girl, you know, the, the last the last girl or last person left at the end of a slasher flick or a horror flick. So this track has to have the feeling of, you know, something terrible has happened or might still be happening a little bit, but you're emerging from it while you are scarred and things aren't okay. You have succeeded, you have um, uh, survived. You are the final girl. Um, so that's the vibe of this track. If you want to make an edit with this, please send it to me. I'd love to see what you come up with.
five tracks were all made on the Machine Plus and then brought over to Ableton to finish up. I actually have a video, I think on the Native Instruments channel, of me making one of these tracks. I can't remember which one it is. And we start off with top 10. This one is like top 10 lists, mindless vlog dribble, videos that will be forgotten the instant after you're done watching them. They're made for content. You know content, everyone loves content. You watch it, it goes in one side of your brain, comes out the other one. Two days later, you're like, did I spend time content? I don't remember. Next up, we have uh, Cool Revenge. It's like a slightly darker version of the one before. Uh, the shaker's too loud in it. I really love the Native Instruments machine shaker. Uh, it's in the percussion thing. You can hold it down. It'll automatically create a nice little shaker rhythm. But I did not balance it very well in the mix. And I feel like it's too loud. So this is one of those tracks that's going to get high passed if I'm going to use it underneath talking. I do believe that it works pretty well as a bed track. Uh, I think it has vibe. And you can switch to it um, as a feature track. Again, like top 10 lists, vlog, drivel, Logan Paul killed my mom. I don't know why I said that. Abroad again. I think this is my favorite of the four or five machine tracks. I use this actually a lot of my videos. You can talk over it. It's great for video ends and going into end cards. Uh, works for vlog stuff. Next up is Decimate. This is the darkest of these ones. Um, I think there's some really, really cool sounds in here. Again, I think I, I went a little hard on the high end. I'm not sure what was going on with how I was processing these tracks. So this is another track I'd probably high pass a bit if I was going to use it as a bed track. I think it sounds cool. I don't know what exactly it'd be for. Try hard, like, travel vlogs, maybe like overly edited rock climbing, cooking videos. Puppy Love, the sweetest of the five. I really like this track. I think it works really, really well uh, uh, for a lot of things. It's very sweet. It works really, really well underneath talking, cooking videos, puppies. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight, a seven, and an eight. Do we have an edit for this beautiful bean footage? And finally, never play. This is a very odd one. Um, all, all sample based. I gave it. Uh, I don't. I don't have anything to say about this. Just listen to it if you like it. It's a great listening track. I don't know from an editing standpoint. I'm not going to edit anything to this. I don't even know what rating I get it. How about an eight six six? How about that? <sighs> How about that? Did it make you happy? Wow! 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 Wow, we made it to the end. Thank you so much. If you're still watching, let's recap. Library music. You make it uh, with an intention for video to go over it, and then you send it out into the world, spank its butt. Uh, you say, hey, get on out there. And uh, you hope that somebody grabs it and says, I'm going to put some video to this. You can get access to a gigantic library of uh, library tracks for free that you can use in your videos and monetize via the YouTube audio library, which you have access to via your uh, studio portal or whatever. Check it out. I think it's in the sidebar or something. I don't know. I've got 40 tracks on there. Hopefully I'll get a uh, commission to do some more. I really, really like this stuff. As of today, all 40 tracks are available online for you to either get via Bandcamp or stream on all the other services. You know, they're everywhere. I'm going to put a link in the description. Probably four, because there's four volumes. Music for algorithms, baby. That's what it's called. Merch. Look at this. Beautiful sweatshirt so comfortable remember we had this one at the beginning of the video too so beautiful so so beautiful right all proceeds from these beautiful shirts and sweatshirts go to benefit mermaids help trans youth just hope that you enjoy them and put them on and they make you feel warm and fuzzy inside and that's the end of the video thank you so much for watching how about we switch to the end card i'll move over to the side of the screen yeah they should be they should be over here i'll flip myself around if they're not over here why don't you think about liking the video you could you could subscribe that would be fun if you want to see me talk about stuff more there's patreon you know um i suppose i think these are like 20 seconds long these end screens oh did you have a favorite track do you want to comment down below a favorite track engage with the video youtube loves that they love that shit. anyways i love you